Welcome to my safe place, aka the den. And here in the confines of my safe place, I'm going to get my shave on with Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Cider House 5. This one's been around for a while. I picked it up last year or the year before. And I'm glad I finally did. I'll be shaving with the entire set of it, Splash Star Jelly, and tossing, topping it off with the EDP and solid cologne that was just gifted to me. You may have seen that on Instagram. Cider House 5 is Doug and Fran's take on a New England cider mill with an interdimensional twist. There's five notes, and those are pipe smoke, mold cider, oakwood, dried leaves, and linseed, linseed oil. I'll get into the notes in just a second. So Cider House 5 is a play, an homage, a play on words, an homage to Slaughterhouse 5, a book that I never read. And it's about like alien abductions and time travel and all these crazy cool things that I never really paid any attention to until probably about a year ago when I first kind of looked into it because of this. And then getting ready for this video, I looked into it more. My wife is a big reader, long story short. I've asked her to pick it up for me next time she goes to the library, which is once a month or so. I'll be getting the uh, beard reduction going with a Lord Cool. And I do have, I believe it's two full days of growth. You can probably see it down here on my neck. Definitely longer than I normally let it go. Usually I shave every day. But I've been crazy busy with work and just got behind on things around the house. I never found a good opportunity to shave yesterday. So today we're going to see just how well this Lord Cool, which I typically enjoy in a handful of razors. I've never used it in this one. And the one I'm using today is my 19 mid thirties. I believe it's a 34 or 35 um, black and red set. Common bar handle with the long tooth, long tooth comb. I normally really, really enjoy the way the long and the short comb shaves. Like I said, this is the first time I've used a Lord Cool in it. I do generally enjoy Lords in these and extra growth. We'll see how it goes. I'll be whipping it up. I believe this is the 636 Omega Silver Tip. I've been having it soak in there in my Smiles for Miles Soaker Mug. My bowl today is the Crown King Scuttle. Let me pause it real quick, see what I can do with this lighting. Tried to do something with the lighting, but I'm just going to roll with it. I'll be scooping again today. That's all I've ever done with this tub is scoop. And I've gotten a good amount of scooping going on with this guy in previous, with previous shaves. I do really enjoy this fragrance. Um, it goes back to one of those things, you know, that... Years ago, if you had told me that I was going to enjoy something that was um, cider scented, I probably wouldn't have believed you. And it's just one of those things that Doug and Fran have, you know, once again, taken something that I otherwise might have thought wouldn't be wearable and made it actually wearable. Um, and to where I enjoy it, like genuinely enjoy it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I look cute with my little goat bun there. It's not really a goat bun, is it? A goat tail? Okay. I got my cute little goat tail going on. Went and grabbed my bougie bottle. My water bottle. Now, I think I'm actually prepared to shave. I hope all you guys are doing well. I'm doing extremely well. Besides talking about Cider House 5, I also just wanted to share my favorite seasonal fragrances that I enjoy, but 
not just seasonal releases, ones that I think fit well with the fall season and going into the holidays. Cider House 5. So we got the pipe, smoke. That was kind of straightforward, right? I know a lot of us are familiar with it. Then there's mold cider. I didn't know, but my wife knew, of course. Mold cider is apple cider that's been cooked and has had um, spices added to it. If you just take raw cider, that's unfiltered and no spices, what you basically have is apple juice. And so, mold cider is when you heat it, you basically, you know, are cooking it and adding in the spices. It's a little wet, I overdid the water a second ago. How's my hair? Sweet, sweet, sweet. Oakwood is a, damn, I really overdid the water, guys. Um, I'll grab my pre-shave real quick. So I added too much water, and the way that I'm gonna try and cheat it is just by throwing on some pre-shave. Lather booster, skin conditioner, hair softener. Let's say I probably use a pre shave about a third of the time anymore. I've gone through different stages where I didn't use it, and then I used it all the time, and then not so much, and then used it. All kinds of you know, cyclical patterns, and right now I'm finding myself back in a pattern of not always using one, probably less often than not. Did I say that right? So, when with it being CK6, it'll start absorbing the water, anyways, but I got it way wet. That's all on me, that's my bad. I'm a noob. So the oak wood is rich, a very rich, woody, earthy fragrance. I got my mirror right over here. See, that's already looking good, or not looking good, but it's starting to look good. It's looking better. And it's reminiscent of like, with undertones of whiskey and vanilla is what I read up on it. It's another one that. I'd still love to get the essential oil or fragrance oil of it, just to play with it and get to know it. Linseed oil is earthy nut oil. And that one is reminiscent of like sesame seeds. And it has a smoky base with a sunflower top. Like the actual sunflower itself. That's how Doug described it. Look at that. So it was super wet a second ago. I probably could have left it alone with no pre-shave at all and it still would have turned out just fine because it's CK6. And those of us who have used it more than once, or even once, know just how thirsty this stuff is. But as a safety measure, I went with the pre-shave. And I'm glad I did because already we're looking at a great consistency, and by the time I'm done, I might even have to add water. I'm gonna whip it up a little bit more. So some of my favorite non-seasonal releases. So fragrances that are generally always available and currently are always available that are not a fall autumn release that I think fit well with the season. Down here to my right, I have a little bowl of water. Well, 
one of those cold spaces cold space for me because of family when I was a kid a lot of my uncles and grandfather wore it and so it always just reminds me of fall and autumn oh man I got a lot of growth it feels so good to shave that I need a nice soothing shave and cold spices because of the, the profile just it alone by itself I think fits well with this change of the seasons another one is one of my absolute favorites um, I have the EDP of it and would like to eventually get the solid I've actually had the solid on my list for a long time I've actually gone through I'm on my second bottle of EDP that is Harvest Moon this I feel like is overlooked too often it was once a seasonal release but it got enough demand that they brought it and made it a permanent flagship, if you will, fragrance. Uh, what else did I grab that isn't? Oh, this one plays in well with, from now to like the first of the year through Christmas. Chocolate bourbon. And if you haven't smelled it, it smells like it sounds. We've got some woodiness going on to it. But because of the chocolate and the bourbon, I feel like it goes extremely well with fall. And I'm just, you know, I'm not going to get too deep into any of these. You guys, I'll say those for when I sh shave, shave with it or whatever. I'm just, you know, touching on all these just briefly, just skimming the top of it. Mm. Oh gosh, that feels so good. Shaving when you got a decent amount of growth is almost indescribable. It's one of those things that just feels so good. Uh, um, sensitive ears around, maybe turn it down. It's not that bad, but I was trying to explain it to my girls, my wife and daughter about how the relief of shaving is, you know, when the, when the hair really gets going and it just feels really good to shave it off. The only way I knew how to really describe it to them, like the same kind of sensation, even though it's not the same and I explained that to them, is when you have to urinate pee really bad. And then you finally get to do your thing. And that relief, shaving's different. How do you guys describe it? The the relief, the release that you get from knocking down that beard when it's growing and you know itchy like mine was with two days growth. Every day, uh, as one of the reasons why I shave every day is just because it feels so damn good. And plus, the wife doesn't like me scruffy, and neither, neither does my daughter. Now that she's getting older, it's not as big as a problem. She doesn't snuggle me as much as she used to. See how perfect this consistency is now? CK6 is very forgiving. He's got to remember to add water. Very, very forgiving. So I think those were my three non-seasonal releases that I think are great for this time of year. Do you have others? Some of my favorite seasonals. Um, I got to throw in one little caveat. I was talking with Douglas. Not all of these are coming back this year. I didn't ask him which ones and he didn't say. It was just something we talked about briefly. I shot him some questions about like linseed oil and a few other things that I was looking into with this video. And he just briefly mentioned that he didn't know, and that's the key word, he didn't know. I think he does know. 
that's just how he, he phrased it. Um, or he has a good idea or a good inkling anyways. Um, that not all of them will be back this year. So with, with these fall seasonal releases that I'm about to show you, there's a good chance that we may not see them this year. And I know a couple of them are still available from different vendors out there. When I was getting ready for this video today, I found a few. So, first one that I grabbed, this is an older tub. I love this tub. I love the artwork. almost need a tattoo of this one. Blue Sawin, named after the Celtic festival. Like a blue moon. Oh, so good. Pumpkin, not pumpkin spice, like fresh October pumpkin. So good, so good. That stuff for me, yeah, there's pumpkin, but there's so much more to it that just screams autumn. Freaking love it. This Lord Cool in this long comb common bar is doing great and this one just came back the other day atomic pumpkin so good 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 i'm gonna grab the edp this year i got to last year i finally grabbed the solid and oh it's just said this before and I'll say it again I'm not really a, I'm not a pumpkin spice guy at all and while this has like the pumpkin spice thing kind of going on it's got the atomic bay rum that's in his you know like his regular and it's just like blue saw one it, when I smell it it doesn't jump at me it's like pumpkin it's, it's like pumpkin spice rather um sorry I got my contacts in there a little dry uh do my ruds thing that's for you Bradley uh, but this has a pumpkin on the label when you take a whiff off the tub and when you get whipped up or you use the splash, it's not going to be anything at all like this, this, you smell it. And right up front, you get the pumpkin, the pumpkin with the blue Samhain is kind of layered in there. Um, so yeah, there's that, but I never, ever thought that I was going to like this. And I freaking love it. And the girls love it. And of course, everywhere I go, when I wear the Atomics, uh, the Atomic Pumpkin, I get compliments. It doesn't matter where I go, if it's at work or just to the store, somebody will inevitably, if I'm out very long, will say something. So moving into our third pass. This one I finally got just last year good friend of mine you may know him uh matthew lawrence he has a youtube channel and an instagram i believe that's where i first met him it was either instagram or facebook um his youtube channel is relatively new last year year and a half something like that i don't know he does some great honest straightforward content though no fuss no muss matthew lawrence i'll put a link to his page in my description but Matthew was getting rid then and out his den last year and he actually wasn't crazy about this vetiver fragrance and so I got a new old stock splash and soap from him for a very fair price a great price couldn't pass it up and I jumped on it and I love it and this one like clown fruit the soap glows in the dark I'll take the tub the lid off the tub and I'll let it sit here for a little bit and then maybe before the end of the video put it in a better light before the end of the video I'll uh hold it up in the dark Can you see that I haven't added any more water if I let it sit another five minutes or so in the bowl, and like that's I got got warm hot water in that scuttle as well, so that's helping thicken it up too. Gorgeous, 
So Monstroso, if you like vetiver, you will absolutely love it. I like vetiver. Um, vetiver Planet is one of my all-time favorite vetiver forward fragrances. This one is fantastic. It wasn't a blind buy. Um, something I thought about doing like a own video on, and I may still, is samples. And uh, let me finish this side first. Squirreling out here. Hmm, got myself just a little teeny bit right there. I think, oh, this actually is it or something. I can feel it now. Uh, so, I love samples, okay? Like, love samples. When I first started getting into wet shaving, it's already drying out, you guys see that? When I first started getting into wet shaving, I wasn't really active, or wasn't active at all, with like forums or any of that stuff. And, you know, 2014, 13, the things that we have available to us today weren't available then. And even when I started getting actually into it in 15, 16, like big time into it, the things that we have available to us today still, it's just, it was a totally different world back then. It, the same, but different, if that makes sense. And so I did a lot of blind buys. And because of it, I ended up with some stuff I didn't like. So I became a huge fan of samples any chance I could get. And one of the things I love about the way Doug and Fran do it, it's so cheap, it's so affordable. It's been the same price forever now. For one dollar, I'm not even going to, I'll look up the, the exact measurement because I can't think of it. I don't want to be wrong. I want to say it's one milliliter, but... It might be more than that. It could be less than that. But for one dollar, you get a sample of not of the soap, but of the splash. And I think if you are trying a base for the first time, a soap sample is absolutely the way you want to go. But if you know the base, like I do, and like many of you do, CK1, CK6, there's no need to try it in the soap because, like I said before, and I'll continue to say it, and I'll say it forever. Soap is a horrible medium, a horrible carrier for fragrance. There's so many things going on in this label that's going to cover and bury and alter. Even alter is one of the things that makes a great base. Is that a great base? When you're formulating one, it doesn't change your fragrance. And if it does, it changes it in a way that you want to change it and that you find pleasing. So... I try to stay away from soap samples whenever possible from companies that I know. And that's why I love the way that Sterling does their EDT sample. That's cheap and affordable. It's a great way to know the fragrance. But even better is the way that Doug and Fran do it with the dollar samples. And I've bought way more than what you see here. I'm going to hold up a whole bunch. I've had more. Um, so these are uh, fragrances that I still want probably 10 or so in here. These are ones that I'll probably never get. And then these are ones that I have. And there's probably, I don't know, 40 or 50 in here. I have no idea. But <laughs> I like samples. I love them. And uh, yeah, my OCD really enjoys it. So let's do a couple touch-ups. I was last talking about Blue Samhain, right? Another one that can't be forgotten. And I hope it comes back this year because I'm really wanting to grab the EDT of it as well. This is an old label. Um, I'll put a picture of the new label right here. Grove. Grove, now the label is more re reminiscent of this guy. But this is the label I have. It's so good. This is another one that... Uh, it's right up my alley. Grove. You know, like a, a grove of trees. 
won't go into any more than that. I plan on doing a shave video with all these this season, or hope to do as many as I can. And then, of course, let's also wrap this up. Clown fruit, briar. Briar is a good one, too. I think that one gets overlooked. Hopefully, that one comes back. Oh, then one of my absolute favorites. I have the, the star jelly, the EVP, and the solid. Mount Bosch. Oh my gosh. Baby. Even the wife loves that one. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up getting the EDP. Like, I was really surprised that she liked that one. It's funny, sometimes you think you know what the wife is going to like. I'm like, oh, she won't like this one. And then she smelled it. She's immediately in love with it. So this Lord Cool has done very, very well with two days growth, two days heavy growth um, in this razor. Very happy. John Kearney sent me the most amazing mail call the other day, a piff, thank you again. John, for that. Okay, I'm going to get into some of those amazing soaps that he sent me. His Buckeyes won today, Saturday. My Ducks beat 12th ranked BYU today. I'm going to put something on the screen right here for John. Oh. It's for you, John. John, with his uh, pith they sent me, also included a note. And he is a huge Ohio State Buckeye fan. And uh, as many of you know, I'm a huge duck fan. I wouldn't say that our two teams are rivals. There's no love lost between the two of them, though. I can tell you that. We did manage to beat them, though, last year on their home turf. Traditionally speaking, though, Ohio State has had the better football teams. Oregon is a track and field school. We're known for track and field mostly. In the last 20 years or so, we've been building up our football program. Oregon actually has more national titles than any other school, just not in football. Let's get into the splash. I do like to do a splash first, and then I do the star jelly. And whenever possible too, like with other companies, I'll do the splash first, and then their bomb. I think I got in the habit of that from using ones that didn't have alcohol, bombs that didn't have alcohol. Star Jelly does have a little bit of alcohol. And they're actually, the Star Jelly is actually formulated and designed to complement the splash. And you can use it either way. Both ways work. Uh, this is just how I do it. Like I've always said, if you're getting the results that you want, then it's the right way. It's that simple. There's no right way to do this. It's just shaving. And if you're getting the results that you were looking for when you started out that shave, and or if you enjoyed it, shoot, you only have to get the results you were looking for as long as you enjoyed it. For me, that's a damn fine shave. Right there every time. But because of the high alcohol content um, through experimenting, my OCD, again, right, I full-on squirrel it all the time. Goliath here is getting covered. Uh, but I like to experiment and play with things. And so back when the Star Jelly first came out in the long, big tubes, 
2,000 years later. Like this. I started doing a whole bunch of experimenting with them back then. Uh, to see if I wanted to do splash first or bomb. And from there is how I developed my regiment, if you will, of alcohol and then bomb, in this case, jelly. And this is the menthol free. I love that they started doing that back in the day. All you had was just the one type and they all had menthol. I don't, I enjoy menthol, but I think there's a place for menthol. And with most of these fragrances, I don't want menthol. Shave Chaser needs menthol. A lot of them, in my opinion, my nose, my taste doesn't. I know, you know, the menthol goes away quickly, but I just don't want it affecting the smell. Again, I blame it on my OCD. Oh gosh, this smells so good, you guys. Look at that. It says very cider forward, in case you're ever wondering. But the pipe smoke and the oak wood darken it. And then you know the dried leaves. It's like think of like a pile of dried leaves. And uh just thinking about grabbing my comb, but my comb's in the bathroom. Dried leaves, if you let them pile up and sit for a little bit, they'll get like musky and sweet. And I think that's the kind of result that we get from this dried leaves um, component in the profile is that you're getting this musky sweetness on top of it. And I think it all just plays together for just an amazing masculine fragrance that turns heads. That simple. EDP. Oh yeah. And then the solid, that was a gift from Doug and Fran. Thank you again, Doug and Fran. With it. I like two, I know I've shown this before, but just in case you didn't see my awesome sauce video, I'll do a little bit right here. And then I also like to get nice and warmed up and rubbed in. Oh yeah. And then I'll also take one more little, you know, just getting little bits. See there, that's very little on there. And then I'll just add it to the chest. And I got some on my other finger. Get some taco going on here. Yeah. Got all my frags here that I meant what I wanted to do. So with that, get you some merch. One of the fragrances that John Kearney gave me was, was John Frum. I have John Frum, I have the EDP for it too. It's amazing. If you haven't checked out the merch at PAA, highly recommend it. I don't get anything for, from you doing it. I just freaking love it. If you haven't noticed, I got a bunch of PAA shirts. Phone cases. This is from an old phone. Uh, best merch in the in the community, hands down. The the selection and everything you get at PAA, they don't, there's no one else that even comes close when it comes to selection of merch and when it comes to vegan bases. Definitely the best vegan base, CK6, and uh, in my opinion, it gives the best tallow bases a run for its money and I think it outperforms most tallow bases. With that, that's enough about that. I bid you adieu. Don't overlook this guy if it does come back or the Mount Bosch. Those are two must-haves for me and of course Atomic, all of them, Harvest Moon, Atomic Pumpkin, Briar, Grove, the fall seasonals are amazing. You know about Cold Spice. Hopefully you already knew about Harvest Moon but if you don't, Check out the scent profile. Yeah. Oh, and chocolate bourbon. The chicks dig it. Remember, little big things. Until next time, thanks for watching. I almost forgot. For those who haven't seen it, Monstroso and Clown Fruit Glow in the Dark. It's the, the Vetiver fragrance that I was talking about a minute ago. Ready? This is super cool. It, it glows like unreal. Look at that. Here's my hand. 
it actually puts light on my hand. It is so bright. See ya.